situation. As I said before, the left liberal mushheads, I would say at this point there are not, not a few of them, who uh, would accept a general war now, deluding themselves that it would be a general war for freedom of expression and free speech. Where have we heard that before? Oh, a hundred years ago we had the war to make the world safe for democracy. Now we might have a world war, with far more casualties, to make the world safe for free speech. And in, unfortunately, in both cases, we have operations that reek of intelligence operations. And I mean by that the interview, once again with the Rand Corporation and the CIA, and now this case, which we'll get to in a minute, so it's, generally speaking, to solidify the dupery, the marché des dupes of these left liberals uh, who are now posturing. They're so happy they can posture. And also, remember, they love to be duped. It's also anti-Assad, right? Oh, the other day, uh, in the morning, there's another interesting thing you can see on my Twitter. I put out in the morning that somehow, some way. The Anglo-Americans would try to turn this event into a reason to bomb Assad. Right? People who are sympathizing with ISIS kill people in Paris, and somehow in this echo chamber, this wilderness of mirrors of the Anglo-American mind, that becomes a reason to not bomb ISIS, but to bomb Assad. And sure enough, Andrea Mitchell, Mrs. Alan Greenspan, somebody who hobnobs with the people of power, right? Mind like a, gra or like a rag bag. She repeats what she's heard at the dinner table or whatever it is, and she says, well, maybe one way to start dealing with terrorism is to stop ignoring the civil war in Syria after four years and do something about it. And we know, of course, when somebody like this says, do something about it, she means bomb Assad. So it's anti-Assad. It's anti-Putin in the sense that uh, here's Hollande saying some things that are actually helping Putin, and he gets slammed. It's anti-Cyprus in the sense that here he is. He's on record saying, let's not, you know, in effect, let's not get too excited about this. The Greeks can choose what they want. Undercutting the hysteria coming from Berlin, right? Is Merkel, <laughs> God knows, is she still compost mentis? We don't know. She's so so uh, excited over this Tsipras case. So it's anti-Tsipras, uh, and it's also it's anti Hollande because the idea is if, if Hollande wants to do anything positive, the Anglo-Americans are clearly going to back Le Pen. And I have to say a few words to people who have been deluded that Le Pen is a friend of Putin. That's a deception posture. That's Maskirovka. That we do not allow. Le Pen is an absolute asset of NATO and the, uh, the what can we say, the U.S. Anglo-American intelligence community. That's Le Pen. Whatever she says, you'll be amazed, right? That's, that's the way demagogues work. Uh, but she's now been strengthened, right? She's now essentially the, the opposition to Hollande uh, is, is Sarkozy fighting for attention, but Le Pen gets all the limelight. Now, let's say a couple of things about who, who did this. The Kouachi brothers, right? We had two things going on today. We had the print shop at the area of Charles de Gaulle Airport, where we had the two shooters, we think, from the, uh, the Charlie Hebdo uh, affair, massacre, 12 people dead, one hostage. In this case, the two Kouachis were killed, of course, and the hostage made it out alive. Then we have the supermarket, Hyper Caché, Super Kosher Supermarket, at the Porte de Vincennes, and there we had this guy, Koulibaly. You see him, he's the black guy in the, in the photographs. Uh, he was killed, and four of the hostages, four dead, allegedly. Right? We don't, really don't know any of this stuff, but just to situate the, uh, the official story. Um, so that's what we have. Now, who are these people? Well, Sharif Kouachi is known for two things. In 2005, he was arrested and jailed for a year and a half because he wanted to go to Syria and then cross into Iraq to fight the U.S. invasion forces in Iraq. So he is a militant, a guerrilla, a jihadi, whatever you want. He's a violent uh, international operative and a patsy, of course. So this Kouachi, 
uh, Sharif uh, went across, came back. So the police knew him. They knew his life, his death, his miracles. The police knew everything about Kuashi. Uh, and then later, uh, I guess around, what, 2008, there was a conspiracy, a plot, to bust a certain Belkacem out of jail. Belkacem, another bomber, another jihadi, his goal uh, had been to blow up the uh, p certain stations of the Paris metro, the subway, in 1995. So we have Sharif Kouachi questioned by the police, and now he's a repeat suspect, repeat offender, what have we. Uh, and it turns out that Koulibaly was also a part of the attempt to bust out Belkacem. So the police knew all about these guys. It's essentially a cell. The two Kouachi brothers, plus Koulibaly, plus now this woman who's supposedly still on the run, and that is to say, Ayat Boumedien. You don't know anything much about her. There were a couple of others, but it's a cell. And you have a big police department, they can't keep a cell like that under surveillance. I can't. Welcome to the second hour of World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C. Now, as we've been telling you for some weeks, there's going to be a parliamentary election in Greece, and that's going to be on January 25th. And as far as we can tell from here, the Syriza party of Alexis Tsipras and others is favored to win by a narrow margin. Now, what, what it means to win and what the relations of the various forces in the coming new parliament might be, we don't know. Therefore, we have called upon a friend of this program who has done yeoman service in the past, right, giving us um, a series of reports, what, uh, almost three years ago on the election that first brought, catapulted uh, Syriza, the left party of Tsipras and Tsipras himself, into European-wide fame. Uh, and that's uh, Michael Chiotinis, who is now speaking to us from Athens. Michael, are you there? Hello, Mr. Hello Hi. there. Welcome back. And we're delighted nice. to get you at short notice. And we would just like to know, in the ten or so minutes that we have, what's the situation, who's going to win, uh, and... They, one of the things we hear is, is that uh, Syriza won't have enough to form a government, but I wonder whether they include that that majority bonus that uh, that the um, Samaras party is enjoying right now, but which might go to uh, to Syriza. Please tell us. They do include the bonus. The the situation uh, goes like this. Syriza is ahead on polls on every poll, even the, the polls that the. The put out by the controlled media show, and they show a narrow margin. But in fact, the 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 the, the distance is a lot bigger than it seems. the The thing is that it's very difficult for Syriza to form a government by its own. It will be. It, it is. It's not impossible, but it is quite difficult to have the uh, the absolute majority in the parliament. You need to have the absolute majority to form a government and to to uh, to have to maintain a government to maintain it to maintain its stability because the vote of confidence of the parliament of the absolute majority of the parliament is essential for uh, a government or else it just falls. Right now, uh, it uh, Syriza is ahead on polls. And uh, it will be the, the winner. There is no chance that the, the, the New Democracy Party cannot uh, overcome this. It, it, it's unchangeable. It will be the first party. Uh, Syriza will be the first party. Uh, the thing is, uh, it's very difficult to find a coalition partner, uh, for, to form a partner to form a coalition government. Believe it or not, uh, right now in Greece, um, in terms of reality and uh, actual political results produced, the, the, the traditional left-right paradigm has less meaning. Now, what's, what has the real meaning right now, at, at this point, is the memorandum, anti-memorandum. Um, 
That is to say, uh, most people would understand the International Monetary Fund conditionalities enforced by the America. The, the memorandum is, is the Holy Bible by right. which Greece has been governed for the last five years. It's the, the, the IMF diktat and the European Commission. Um, now, um, the, the thing is that there is one party of the right wing that is anti-memorandum and this is actually the best bet for Syriza to have a coalition partner. The best bet for, for a, a radical left party is a right wing anti-memorandum party and they, they already uh, say that they have agreed upon a, a basic economic program. So, but this party is very is small right now. The polls show it at the limit of 3%, and you need 3% to get inside parliament, to get par the parliament representation. And what, uh, what is the name of that party? The name of that party is Anel, it's by, by a guy, the guy, the leader is Kamenos, Panos Kamenos. This party is very crucial if it gets inside parliament or not, because if it doesn't, then the only anti-memorandum forces inside parliament will be the left. It's, it's, it's essential, it's indispensable that there is a right-wing anti-memorandum representation inside parliament in the political field. I, that's, that's, my, that's my opinion, at least. Now, we would like, we would very much like, and it's not impossible to have a Syriza government, an absolute majority of Syriza, but uh, in, if uh, if Syriza doesn't make, but doesn't make it, uh, and uh, Anel doesn't make it into parliament to help form a government, the other uh, coalition, possible coalition partner, is called the uh, Topotami, which means the river. It's a guy, a, a, a clown, a television producer. He he makes, he used to make uh, documentaries about. Uh, social issues, but he does it in a way that never really challenges, uh, challenges um, the system or the condition in which social problems are produced, but just the social problem, uh, he, 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 um, uh, he shows that it, he shows it as a, as a t touristic, uh, melancholic tour, uh, of the amongst the socially expelled or socially excluded people. Okay. My opinion, he he is the big danger of this election because he is a cultural leftist, but he's actually pro austerity, and you can see this. He is uh, it's it's a party ma massively boosted by by the the mass media, by the corporate media, and. Um, its role will be very dangerous because if uh, Syriza cannot form another government, it may uh, be obliged to form a government with this party. And I must say it, this is a, a big danger because they, they will not allow the whole of the program to be implemented. Now, now you say the, the program, maybe we could just take a second. And yeah. tell us, what, what are they running on? What, what would the program be? And, uh, well, let, before we get to the program of the government, what is Syriza saying most prominently? The, it, uh, it runs on a few simple things. Uh, it, 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 it's very wise, I think, that it keeps it simple. Just, we need, right now, uh, at the point that we have come at this point, we need emergency humanitarian spending, social spending, to keep people alive. And uh, don't think that we, we are talking about something massive or something crazy. We're talking about uh, uh, funds for people to have electricity in their homes. Uh, electricity, free electricity for people who cannot afford electricity. Uh, it, it's despicable, despicable what is happening here in Greece. Absolutely. And, uh, and the second point is there a renegotiation of the debt and of the whole program from scratch and a an attempt to reform, to restructure uh, the Eurozone to a more viable form 
And I think that they will be, they will cave. They, the Europeans cannot um, 